we are the violent suppression unit. We're specifically here to try and target violent crime, violent offenders. Running towards us. Five males making off. I see three all dark clothing. One's got a, uh, a white plastic JD bag style thing. Location. Water farm. It's quite a dangerous place to police. Like, you generally don't come down here unless you're in pretty good numbers. We come on Maybe here as six of us them. and we come across like a group. If the group runs, it, it's a nightmare. You've got flats all over the place, roads everywhere. They're running back that way. Jim, Jim, go back the way we came. There's one running towards you. You've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of police vehicle and police officers and run for no reason. Okay, which leads me to believe you may be in, in possession of an offensive weapon, a knife, or some kind of other weapon. Okay. So, based on that fact, you are detained for a Section 1 pace search. What am I going to find? Not anything illegal? Okay. What have you got under here? When you are here doing stops, you have to be very careful with how you deal with people. Because you'll have members of the community just coming out from nowhere. Why, why, why do they surround you guys? Well, I think it's just trying to intimidate us from doing our job. They think it's going to stop us from doing our job. This suspect was searched for weapons and drugs, but oh nothing's found. God. And he's released. No, no, no. You look ripped, my man. You've money, you've money. Black, innit? Uh, it's all in your pockets. Yeah. Let's look for any black guys on the block. People run from us, we assume they're up. They've got a reason to run from us, so. We're but scared just, of you, no, look. Honestly, explain that to me. You're a bunch of animals. You explain that to me. You, you said to me. You look cute. Yeah, take that. Stick in there. I don't know what I expected The Boardwater Farm has a lot of good stories, but obviously it linked to some of the bad stories as well. The two facts that always come back are Keith Blakelock and Mark Duggan. It was during an uprising here that a police officer was murdered. I now appeal to all responsible citizens to join in identifying and bringing forward those responsible for Keith Blakelock's death. So they locked all of us black people in there. Don't you think that was going to build a rage? Ah! And that rage was bubbling and bubbling and it just exploded. I was stigmatised by the police where they came and kicked off my door, arrested me, um, took me into the station for three days, terrorised me for the death of a police officer I do not know about all because I lived on Broadwater Farm. Is and that? that's really, that's what as well has put the hate in me. Mark him up! The master, we're not up to. Aren't it? We up to. Things got worse for Paulette when one of her friends was killed by a police officer. His name was Mark Duggan. I heard the shot from where I live on the road where I live. We all heard the shot that killed Mark Duggan. Tottenham erupted, and the rest of London followed. It was horrible. It was very horrible what happened after the riot. We didn't want this. I didn't want these things to happen. For police officers, especially in my career, I'd what? say the hostility towards police is more now than it ever has been. A lot of people don't want to speak to us. I don't know if policing can do more to improve that. I want to understand why the relationship is that bad. I've come to meet a well-known community activist who is a mentor for young people here. Many of them are involved in gangs. Unfortunately, what I see in society, we're building men, strong body men, with weak minds. And that's a dangerous recipe for people for, to lose their, to lose control far quicker. And if you've got the, the, the added recipe where we don't have 
we've got little respect for law and order, that means that we've got no faith in the police to come and deal with whatever violation has occurred to me. So I will take the law into my own hand and take the retribution any which way I feel. So you think there's just, if, if, if just say a stabbing happens uh, around here, you think that the first thought in the majority of people's minds here would not be, I'm going to call the police? Absolutely, why should I? I'm not a snitch. Because they would solve the crime? I'm not a snitch, I'm not an informer. Put and the person behind bars? No. And I hold the F of the police. I buried three friends. Sorry to hear that. What happened to them? They got stabbed. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I've seen like, my friend is stiff in the casket. And obviously that has an effect on you as a, as, a, as a young male. But at the same time, it's woke me up because it's shown me there is no respawns in this life, innit? This is not a computer game, bro. You get, you get shot once, you get stabbed once. You have no control over where that bullet's tearing through. You have no control over where that, that, that stainless steel or knife is tearing through your artery. You have no control of that. All it takes is one and you're gone. Was that the tipping point for you when you, you had to bury your friends? Yeah, that was, that was, that was, the, that was the time I said, this is, this is dead, man, I need to get out of here. How are we doing guys? Myself, Chris Predator OBE, here to do a quick one. Real Talk True Season. Now, I just wanted to touch base on another topic that we don't seem to talk about. We seem to talk about knife crime, many of deaths, and I know sometimes we talk about many, many small little solutions, but do we feel like the Metropolitan Police and ourselves is doing enough to bridge the gap? And the reasons why I wanted to play you this video, because nine times out of 10, we always say that the police is the enemy, the police is the enemy, the police is the gangs. Why is it that we've got to a stage now where we still feel like the police is the gang and we still haven't come together to stop knife crime. A lot of us are sitting there talking about we hate the police just as much as we hate what's going on in our community. Nine times out of ten, there's a lot of us that are losing sons, losing loved ones, and no matter how much you hate the police, we end up having to call them, having to call them to investigate the crime, to come round anyway. Do you know what I was there? When the crime's being committed, the police are going to come round. So why is it still that we've got to a stage where we do believe that, you know, we don't want to talk to the police? It seems like snitching. Have we got to a generation now, with even with our young kids, Kids, we are still sitting there saying that the police are the enemy. Now, I'm not saying that they're great. I'm not saying that they do a great job in sometimes with the, the way that they live out and the way that they come around and talk to our young boys, the way that they stop and search, the way that they handle their business. We know there's a lot of bent cops. We know there's a lot of bad apples. There's a lot of bad apples in a lot of organisations. My whole thing is like, there's a lot of police officers that are, are going out there every single day that are working towards trying to better the community, working towards trying to help us, trying to support us. And if we are sitting there every time they come in, and we want to walk away. Excuse me, can I talk to you? And you want to walk away when we know it was Justin, when we know it was my man that lived two doors down and he's been causing bare rights on their estates anyway, breaking into people's houses and causing people a nightmare within their own community. There's certain people that's scared to go home because of the gangs and all the rest of it. So my whole point is not about just naming and shaming parents and saying to the young people, stop stabbing each other and saying to the government, they need to be doing more, saying to the police like they ain't doing nothing. Do we need to start bridging the gap? And how do we bridge that gap? How do we look at it in a positive way? How do we sit there and say, like I said before, if we ain't going to have police, then we need to police our own community. We definitely don't want to do that. So how do we actually sit there and say, do you know what? Let's actually start understanding what the police's job is meant to be and making sure that we're holding them accountable. So some of us might need to go to board meetings. Some of us might have to really, really sit down. Some of us might have to even get into policing in that kind of sense to make sure that we understand and we're filtering through that information from top down. Because nine times out of 10 in our community, we never see the police officers. And there's a lot of police officers saying, well, we're fighting and we're doing this, we're doing that. And nine times out of 10, we're not hearing none of this information. All we do, we see you come in our community when it's emergency. Nine times out of 10, you don't come on time. Young kids are getting killed. No cases are being solved. Parents are calling up and saying, Do you know what, my son feels threatened. Gangs are trying to come to our house. Nothing's been done about that. But it seems that things are happening behind closed doors, whether the government are dragging their feet, where, whether they've got a lack of staff, whether they don't even know enough information, because nine times out of 10, they only can go off the information that they know and no one ain't saying nothing. So how are they meant to solve everything if they don't know anything? We're living in an era now where everyone's wearing gloves, everyone's wearing balaclavas, so we don't know who's who and who's actually really, really committing certain crimes. But we do as the community we know what's going on and it's time for us to step up and say if we ain't going to bridge the gap then we actually need to start policing and understanding our community and saying all right cool we need to make sure there's infrastructures in place to make sure that we're putting putting our hands up and holding people accountable and saying you know what 
Trish, or do you know what, Daniel, that your, your son, you know, is moving a bit mad and we need to hold you accountable because right now he's going down the wrong path. We're not holding no one accountable. We're just looking at certain kids saying, yeah, he's going to grow up bad. Yeah, he's going to end up in prison. Yeah, this one don't listen. Did you see the way they look at the mum? Look at the way the mum treats them and they think, oh yeah, she's just as bad. Did you hear last week? Yeah, she took some stolen goods. And that's all we do. We speak about our community, but at the same time, we don't sit there and say, how can we support that young mother? How can we support that young father? How can we support other people if we know that we've got the, the infrastructure, if we've got the information, if we've got the know-how, sometimes we might even have the money, sometimes it's time. You might even just have the time to look at a child and be like, you know what, Ra, I'm going to bring him in, I'm taking my son football, I'm going to take him with me. And the small little things like that allows us to have a better community and allows young people to actually see a different life and sit there and can feel like, you know what, there is actually opportunities out there for me. It's also for the government to bring back youth clubs, to bring back loads of organisations and bring back the real, real money that was actually manifesting great young people within our community you've got to remember we've come from that era we've come from that youth club era we've come from that era of socializing we come from that era of developing we've come from that era of really being able to know that you needed a craft you needed a skill none of our kids know about crafts and skills anymore even though we're moving into the tech world let's teach them about tech let's teach them about coding let's teach them about cryptocurrency let's teach them about property let's teach them about money management like we used to have pan-african schools when we was growing up we used to have friends that was going to Islam school, we had friends that was going to the Jewish schools, we had these kind of things which we do not have now because it's been stripped back and everybody is getting their information from social media. But what do you guys think? Do you think we're doing enough to bridge the gap on the war between Metropolitan Police and the people itself and the community? Do you think there's more that we can do? Do you think there's other stuff that the police can do? Comment below. But this year, guys, I want to look towards how we bridge the gap instead of how we stick to stay divided and say that this person's wrong and that person's wrong. What's you guys' thoughts? Comment below. How do you go after the bad guys without alienating the good guys in these communities? It's a difficult question. It's a very difficult uh, question. I, I, all I can say is from my own experience and working with these guys is you, you treat everybody with respect. You know, even if it's a bad guy. You still treat that bad guy with respect as a human being at the end of the day. We're there to stop bad behaviour, aren't we? Whether that alienates passers-by, I, I don't think we can do anything about that. London is on track for one of the worst years for teenage murders in decades. Many of the victims are children. And I'm reminded of this as I arrive at Broadwater Farm. What happened? I was just, uh, just stabbing inside there. Really? Whereabouts? Just in there? Oh, really? How old was he? 16. 16? What do you think the police would describe you? As a menace to society. I know you? A menace to No. I'm a family man. We're portrayed as criminals, as gang members. Has any of those people that portray us as that way ever spoke to us and said to us, how do you feel as a person? You mentioned gang wars. Gang wars in what way? Well, I mean, young kid's just been stabbed over there, hasn't he? All right, I don't really know what that's about, but I can tell you there is a lot of people that don't like us from other areas, and that's how it works. So I could be out there just with my wife or my child chilling, walking like it's happened five times already, walking, my mum's been there, me and my mum, where, where, where? What, shot at? Yeah. You've been shot at? Yeah, many times, man. Nothing really happens over it that helps the community. What's benefiting us? What is helping us? We're still here suffering. There's nothing that helps us get jobs. There's nothing that helps us elevate. We're still stuck in the same rut. Do you think there's an answer to this problem or do you think this issue is just going to go on and on and on? I think it's a long-term problem. It's never going to be fixed overnight. I think we just always have to keep working at it. I'll be honest with you, there could be a solution to it, but I am not the person to tell you because I don't know if there's a solution to it. I might not even live to see the solution. 